Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Quest. About two weeks ago I had a viewer who requested me to take a look at Chaos or K-A-O-S. I prefer Chaos. It's an extremely cool name. And you know it's not easy to hit every request. It's just a matter of time. And for most of you who follow the channel you know that I like to install my distros and really use them on hardware and then give feedback as opposed to just running them through a virtual machine. Nothing wrong with that if you just want to see what things look like. I simply prefer to install them and take a little time before I do reviews or overviews. So to that viewer, um, this is not going to be the review video. I'm going to do something a little different here and really what I want to do is step through what chaos is. I want to go through um, the whole idea behind this distribution because it's unique in a lot of ways and I really applaud um, the approach that they're taking. And so if you're looking for a video where I'm going to step through the desktop environment and everything that I can uh, in way of operating system and you know point all of these things out, that's not this video. That'll be a follow-up video to this video, so fair warning. This video is going to be um, more focused on what chaos is, what the, the core goal is. It's simply because there's enough going on here and there, there's I've got admiration for what they're doing basically. I want to step through things to know about this distro before you try it. And you know one of the fun parts of Linux is discovery, uh, discovery of new things, discovery of new ways of doing things. And Chaos and its developers certainly present enough to keep things really interesting. And um, this is going to be fun. So with that all said, we're going to hop over to their web page. Chaos is a lean KDE distribution. It is an independent distribution. So what that means if you're new to the Linux world, this is not a distribution where the developers took an Ubuntu base, for example and created their own distro. It is not an Arch-based distro. It's built from scratch. So they may take you know, various packages and things like that from other distros, various tools from other distros, but as a whole this is an independent built from scratch distribution and that alone um, is a monumental task. So kudos to Chaos and its developers just from that standpoint. Now I want to talk about a few other things and we're going to go over to goals and I'll post a link to this page here in the video notes and so we're going to hop over to goals and read through this. So the idea behind chaos is to create a rolling transparent distribution. Let me stop there. Um, there's you know always opinion and especially in the Linux world you get a lot of opinion and you know everyone's got an opinion so here I prefer a rolling release in a lot of cases uh, if it's done right and if it's managed right uh, personally I just like having up-to-date packages Now I'm not going to read through everything verbatim here but there's some key points that I just want to make sure you the viewer if you're someone who's never seen this that you know about and give you a feel for really what they're trying to achieve here before you decide to maybe install it and give it a try all right, so again, this is built from scratch with a very specific focus, and that focus is on one desktop environment, and that happens to be one of my favorites, which is KDE Plasma. Now, the other thing here to note is that they focus in on one uh, one toolkit, and that is Qt or Qt. So, um, again, if you're new to Linux, the toolkit being Qt. Well, let me just put it simply here without getting into all the details. The various applications built with this one toolkit are going to maintain a consistent look and somewhat UI, um, and it's all going to fit together. And, and typically what will happen is if you develop under one toolkit from one application to the other, things are going to look like they belong together. If you look at an XFCE desktop or GNOME slash GNOME desktop that is using the GTK toolkit. Now what you'll find on a lot of distributions is there's a, a mixture. 
And the reason is, and let's just take Arch for example. So let's say you loaded up an Arch-based distro with the GNOME desktop. Well, because it's Arch, you've got access to virtually every every piece of Linux software out there, uh, one way or another. And that may be GTK based, you know, toolkit based, or it may be something that you're pulling in that is Qt based. So uh, Kden Live, for example. And sometimes merging those two worlds, you end up with lackluster results. I'll just put it like that. Positories are built from the ground up. So with that, you're going to have a limit to what's available. But the one thing that is really cool when you're an experienced Linux user is knowing that everything you're pulling in works really well or will work really well with your system. And that's because things have been vetted. You know, there's not going to be something added to the repositories in the case of, or it's less likely that there'll be something added to the repositories of chaos that's going to be really wonky looking on your system or not work well with your system. So that's one of their goals there is to uh, keep the tools and the applications um, in a state, in the repository, in a state that's going to be high quality instead of quantity, they go on to say here. So who is the target user? And um, this is something, as I read it, it kind of pulled me into wanting to read even more, and that's why I decided to do a video like this. The target user is someone who has tried many operating systems. And I know many of you viewers out there have tried a lot of operating systems. And basically, that's what Linux Quest is all about, is that quest to find that Linux OS that, you know, maybe your ultimate or maybe your top three ultimate. But uh, that is the target here, someone who's tried a lot of systems, distributions, desktop en environments, and they have uh, found a distribution that, you know, or they've zeroed in on a distribution that gives them all the available resources that they need to do what they need to do. And they have spent enough time with desktop environments to know that KDE Plasma is the one that they prefer. So if you're someone who is hung up on GNOME um, and you love GNOME and in your uh, you know past experience KDE wasn't your cup of tea, they're just you know they're making it clear here. Chaos will never use anything other than KDE. Well, never say never, but <laughs> it's it's highly unlikely. Um, Chaos has limited repositories, and for many users, the options available will be plenty, they go on to say here. When it's not the case, one of the reasons why Pac-Man was chosen for the package manager comes into play. It offers about the easiest solution available to build your own packages. So that is an option there. If you've got that one piece of key software you have to have and it's not in the repo, you can use Pac-Man to build that app and add it to your system. So that's very good to know as well. All right, so we're going to go over here to the FAC. Target user, we talked about that a little bit, but I want to highlight a couple of other things here that will be important for you to know. Uh, this operating system is focused on hardware that is about from 2007 and later so that there are no issues with running 64-bit software. Um, they go on to say here that the target audience is not afraid to use KDE QT versions of their needed applications. And uh, again, the focus to see the best quality of application, not quantity. And, you know, this kind of pulled me in even more. Um, and I like, I like where they're going with this. And they, so basically they're saying here that it's going to be limited and it may not be set up the way you're used to, even if it means learning some new ways of working with a before unused application. Uh, or, in this case, as I've discovered, um, a new way of working with things you've worked with in the past because of the way that they have them set up here in Chaos. Now, one of the things I'll point out here is the panel on the right. Never have I used, day in, day out, my panel on the right-hand side with the application launcher here on the right-hand side either. And that's just one example of how different Chaos really is. Um, there is also an understanding here that there's going to be 
just a few applications. This is a lean operating system. So they go on to point out here, for example, your music players may be limited to five or six applications as opposed to 20 different applications to choose from. Now, as far as your hardware requirements are concerned, KDE is a modern desktop environment. And I think many people today are surprised at how fast and how well it runs. And in my humble opinion, if you're someone who's, you know, maybe you just left the GNOME desktop and you hop over to KDE, I think you'll be impressed at how smooth, fluid, and fast KDE feels compared to GNOME in some cases. So, uh, you know, KDE can be made to run on very low-end hardware, but in general, there are better options available such as OpenBox. So they're just wanting you to know that. Uh, the minimal hardware spec needed for Chaos is 8 gig, but 25 gig is recommended. Chaos will install with 1 gig of RAM, though they uh, recommend two gigs or more, and I would say four, really, and you want a 64-bit system. Now, Chaos is a rolling distribution, so the updates are going to be frequent, and sometimes they can be large. And let's just talk a minute about the kernel in Chaos. So Chaos has made the choice to use a Linux kernel as its base, and they are looking at a Lumos kernel as opposed to the Linux kernel, and that might be something they do in the future. So um, these folks aren't afraid to step out on a limb here, apparently. Uh, after that choice, they go with the best available package manager, and in their opinion, that's uh, Pac-Man. So they want to be flexible with that because it's a rolling release. The uh, Oh, well, because it's a rolling release, you're going to have you know current KDE everything. In fact, when 5.13 came out, um, I think Chaos was one of the first to implement that and get that uh, started or uploaded uh, to the repository so that they would be able to update to that for the users. And on the kernel, uh, you're going to find, I, I think there's an option, because I was reading through here, let me, repositories, we'll read a little bit about the repositories, but on the kernel, they use a current, I think is I think it is a current stable kernel, but you've got an option of the latest kernel, and I think it's released maybe six weeks after uh, that release so while you may not get it right away and don't hold my feet to the fire on this in chaos but you have the option to get the latest kernel all right i'm glad i got through that one for some reason that was hard to lay out uh, repositories. Let's talk about the core. The core has the base packages needed for the system to boot up, communicate with the BIOS, connect to most hardware, and set basic shell options. Then you have a main uh, in your repository, and that consists of all the needed libraries, drivers, and firmware needed to make the desktop and applications function. Many of these can be fully rolling and will move to the end user after a 7 to 10 day testing period. So they're not just throwing out applications and packages they are putting them to the test uh, quality control if you will to make sure things aren't going to totally hose your system so a lot of respect again to the developers just wanted to kind of step through that with you everything will be tested independent let's talk about that a minute chaos is not another arch based distribution right well, it's it's not. So um, without reading through all of this, it is independent. Various tools from OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE and other um, other operating systems, but all built from scratch, all independent and built from scratch. So when stating a distribution is based on another, that means in 99% of the cases that the distribution uses the repositories of that distribution that it's based on. And I'd say that's 99.5% of the time. Uh, but again, because this is independent, um, you're not going to pull into, say, Ubuntu's repository, uh, for example, or um, you know, OpenSUSE's repository and pull those apps down. You're only going to pull down, in way of applications, what Chaos has put into their repositories. So it is an independent group of applications Focus tightly around Qt and tested by Chaos before you know before you install them, and uh, you know it's really pulled me in and it piqued my interest as I have got this installed and played around with a few things. Uh, let's go over here to what's new, the latest news, as a precursor to my review video. So, what is new with Chaos 2018.06? And from the 06, you might 
see the debt was released in June. Uh, but when I installed this, there was an update of uh, about 230 megabyte, not, not too huge, uh, but that did bring things up to date. So just days after Plasma 5.13.1 was announced, um, it was added to Chaos. And I'm not going to go through all the highlights of Plasma in this case, but I do want to point out some of the new features uh, with this latest release. So this ISO has a complete redesign of the uh, Medina theme, um, and we'll again we'll save that for the full review video. And then there are some 2,500 new icons in use, and that's one of the things that stands out. This is not going to look like your typical Plasma desktop when you first launch in and start working your way through the system. Uh, the login theme and the Chaos community has selected a new wallpaper, which I really like. That was created by Jamanda. Uh, nice job. Very, very kind of clean and, and just interesting. Also, uh, new in Chaos is the creation, which is uh, it's Welch for welcome, Cros Cros Croso. I'm butchering it, I'm sure. And I, I'm really looking forward to pointing this out because... Um, because this is a terrific idea. So again, this will be in the next video. So it will help with uh, configuring the new install. It will run on the new system and it offers the ability to adjust some 15 commonly used settings. They're all right there as soon as you launch in. Easy to find. So again, it will be fun to step through that with you in the next video. It, is all, it also includes a custom wallpaper selector, distribution info, and news. This is all written in QML and it fits well with the welcome application used in the live system. And the latter now includes a fully rewritten installation guide. As always with this rolling distribution you'll find the very latest packages for the Plasma desktop. So in here you're going to see Framework 547, Plasma 513, KDE Applications 1804 all built on QT511.1. So uh, that will also be updated because it's rolling. So as things are released and tested, you're going to stay you know, on the forefront of what's new with KDE. And you can read through this, but I'll hit some of the highlights. So you're looking at Linux kernel 416.14, uh, 4, uh, Pac-Man 5.1, Wayland 1.15, uh, what else stands out? Mesa 18.1, Updated Network Manager. Intel Unicode 2018-425 and Ruby 2.5.1. So uh, with that, let's see here. Anything else we want? To, oh yeah, okay. Common notes. Chaos uses a first run wizard. It will run on newly installed systems and with just a few clicks, it will allow you to adjust your mouse behavior, menu launcher, desktop theme, wallpaper, color scheme, widget style, window decoration, and virtual desktops used. With one click, this wizard will also link to the Chaos documentation and all the contact info. So let's keep on going here. Calamaries, uh, it's got uh, the latest of Calamaries installer, which I'm a fan of. And then we get down here to known issues. Installing on RAID is currently not possible. So I have also joined the Google Plus community of Chaos, and I have spent probably a good 45 minutes reading through a ton of their documentation and uh, you know uh, shame on me for not spending more time with chaos in the past uh, but going all the way back to 2013 you see all the updates uh, to present and that just tells you that this is a distribution with some staying power and the fact that it's independent and they've maintained it all this time and built up uh, uh, independent repository like this again this is a it's a monumental thing it's not something to take lightly so for that I wanted to spend more time going through and explaining all of this to you the viewer and then I'll spend some time with the operating system and the next video for chaos will be the full review pointing out everything that I can find to point out for you all right let's wrap this up thanks for watching stay tuned for the follow-up chaos review video now there might be another video or two between this video and the next chaos video but uh, just wanted to give you a heads up on that all right thanks for watching check you later